Welcome back, Fair, for another discussion about the business of containers. Happy to be back, Marty. What are we talking about today? In today's episode, I will share what I've learned from IT decision makers about their container journey and what they wish they had known before they got started. Sounds great. Do IT decision makers know and care about containers? Yes, they like containers because it helps them with four things. Technical debt, multi-cloud, low utilization, and hiding. Right. Uh, the last video you and I shot together went into more detail about that. Uh, I'll link to it in the description. Anyone who wants a description of why containers matter to the business people, they should watch the video. But today, we are talking about when you have decided that containers are the right path forward for your organization, then how do you get started? Moving your business applications to containers in the cloud is a big step. Where do you even start? You start with where you are today and where you want to go. Here's a map. Many organizations are not using containers and they are not in the cloud. So they start in the bottom left box. And I want to go to the top right box. That's right. In the top right box, you get the benefits of both the cloud and containers. All right. So if my organization is in the start box, how do I get to the goal box? There are three ways to get there. The first one is lift and shift. You move your existing system to the cloud as it is now. And how does that help you? When your system is in the cloud, it will be easier to manage it. If a server's power supply or network card breaks, your cloud provider will replace it. You don't have to do that anymore. And looking at the grid, it looks like lift and shift is the first step toward your goal? That's right. The next step is containerize your workload. When you've done that, you get all benefits of being in the cloud. Some people call this move and improve. This method is useful if you need to move to the cloud as soon as possible. It's also a good one if you're still building out DevOps practices and culture in your organization. But you are not quite there yet. I imagine this two-step process gives you a good time to evaluate too after the first step. Right. When you have done the lift and shift, it is optional to containerize. You might choose not to containerize some workloads like databases and backups. Sounds good. Uh, your grid implies that there's another path to the cloud? Yes. You can choose to containerize your applications first before you move to the cloud. By doing that, you get safer deployments and easier management in your existing data center. Why would I want to stay in my existing data center? Perhaps you are in a multi-year contract with your existing data center provider, or you have just made a major CapEx investment in new servers and you need to amortize that for a while longer. Or there may be security concerns about moving to the cloud that you take some time to sort them out. In all these cases, you don't want to move to the cloud right away, but you want to be ready when the time comes and you get safer deployments while you are doing that prep work. And when the time comes, you move your containerized workload to the cloud? Right. This move will be much easier because you did most of the heavy lifting in the previous step. That all makes sense. Uh, depending on where my organization is in terms of DevOps culture, uh, contracts, capex investment, and so on, I will pick the path to the cloud that's right for me. That's right. But that is a, a third way. You can containerize and migrate all at the same time. Wow, that sounds audacious. Uh, but I like how it's fewer steps. This path is right for you if an application is under active development and you want to reap the full benefits of the cloud sooner. When you've made this move, you have a faster time to market. What types of applications would be good for this approach? Smaller applications that are changing often. For example, your company's website or evolving systems that use microservices and modern architectures. That makes sense, Fair. Uh, thank you for giving us another insight into the business of cloud computing and containers. Happy to help. And thank you, everyone, for watching.
If you have questions for Fair or me, please add them in the comments. Also, do let us know if there are other topics you'd like to hear about in future episodes. Until next time! Thank you.